Sweet fellowship, isn't it? So very thankful. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 1, God says, I am sought of them who ask not for me. <laughs> um, and all that means is we didn't initiate our relationship with the Lord. Um, he's the one that put it in our hearts to seek him out. And uh, we love him because he first loved us. I am found of them who sought me not. <laughs> Pray the Lord will enable us to, to seek him and to, um, to know him through the preaching of his gospel and through the worship. So uh, let's stand together, Brother Tom. You're going to lead us in number 199, number 199. with me please in God's word to Luke and we're going to start reading at Luke chapter 14 verse 33 you know the Lord's word talks about growing in grace 
And uh, it's not what religious folks think it is. It's just the opposite. I, I learned very painfully and convincingly. Growing in grace, I'm more convinced every day the Lord lets me live of my ability, my inability to do anything to save my soul, even to sustain me. And I become more convinced of my need for his ability to do it for me. Uh, if God doesn't do it, it won't be done. That's all there is to it. I want us to look here at verse 33. The Lord speaking, he says, So likewise, whoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his Savior, wherein shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. That's what God's doing in his call to worship. He's telling us, if you can hear, you hear me. And the only way I can hear is he enables me to. And then the next two is what I want you to see. Then drew near to him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes, the religious, murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. I, I don't know, I, I can't even speak about that. I can say I'm so thankful God eats with sinners. Because if he didn't, he'd never eat with me. That's what he's here today. If you're a sinner, brother's going to preach some food to you. If you're not a sinner, there's nothing for you. you can, you're wasting your time. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness... And go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he layeth on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Needs no repentance. What a comfort it is and, uh, to know that the Lord's going, he's going to get his sheep. That's the only encouragement I have for my lost loved family members. I, I don't see any encouragement in them. I can just tell you that. All I see is heartache despair but the good news is he eats with sinners and if they're his he'll eat with them and I pray that he might be willing to save them because we know he's able please join me as we Lord we we confess to you this morning our inability to do anything on our own behalf Pray that you would send your spirit to us and enable us this morning to worship you, to love you, to desire you. And we pray for the servant that you've chosen, Brother Greg, and your other gospel preachers, that you would speak through them this morning, Lord. Give them freedom, that your spirit would be upon them. We ask that you would give us the ability to hear and to believe. And we especially pray, oh, that there might be one this morning, one that's a stranger to your grace, that we might rejoice in seeing you come and eat with them. We ask this for your glory alone. Amen.
Let's all stand together once again. We'll sing the hymn that's on the back of your bulletin. Hymn that's on the back of your bulletin. <clears throat> saints below too, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, I just am amazed how the Lord has uh, brought two passages of scripture that, together this morning. Um, will you open your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 63, please? Isaiah chapter 63. And those of you that were here for the first hour will think this is a continuation. I suppose it is. Um, because the Lord is dealing with the same subject in both the passage we looked at in Mark chapter 4 and uh, this passage in Isaiah chapter 63. Uh, those of you that are here regularly know that we just go verse by verse through books of the Bible. And so the Lord has purposed us to have both of these passages um, today. And uh, I hope that he will drive the message home to our hearts. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 63, verse 8. For he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. How do I know? that the Lord's my Savior? And the answer is in that verse. They will be children that will not lie. They will not lie. You say, well, preacher, doesn't the Bible say that we come from the womb speaking lies? Yeah, we do. We do. That's what we are by nature. Scripture says all men are liars, God alone tells the truth. I was thinking about how our children, ought, most times, the very first word they speak is no. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and generally speaking, they use that word in response to a question that we ask them knowing that they're guilty. <laughs> 
they respond by saying no. <laughs> and even before they can speak, even before they can speak, when an infant acts as if they're dying because they've got a wet diaper or because they're hungry, they're lying. They're lying. They're not dying. Okay? So, uh, you know, that, what does this mean? God's children will not lie. So, he was their savior. Now, there is another sense in which everything we do and everything we say is a lie. Let me show you that. Turn to me to Psalm 15. <clears throat> Psalm 15. <clears throat> the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful. That means the heart of man lies. Wicked above all things, who can know it? We can't even know our own hearts, can we? <laughs> uh, in another place, in Genesis chapter 6, the Lord tells us that when he looks down from heaven and peers into the heart of man, he sees that every imagination of the thoughts of the heart are only evil and that continually. And then in Romans chapter 3, when the Lord looks down through our throats, what does he see? A sepulcher. <laughs> What's he saying? Well, here's what he's saying. Look at, verse, look at chapter Psalm 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle, and who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Now, life has a lot of questions. Now, I know you're faced with questions, and I'm faced with questions every day. Some important, some not so important. But there is no question in all the world as important as this question. There's no question more important that we know the answer to than this question. Who's going to abide in the presence of God? How can a man born of a woman stand in the presence of a holy God? <laughs> How can I be saved? How can I know that I have acceptance with God? And now the Lord's going to answer that question. He that walketh uprightly. Every step. Now, the interesting thing about we looked at this passage Wednesday night. Most of you weren't able to be here, but the verbs in this, in this passage, walketh, worketh, speaketh, backbiteth, doeth evil, and taketh up, they're all a continuous, unbroken action. That's the, that's the meaning of this passage. So God's answering the question, who's going to stand in the presence of God? Those who walk uprightly every step of their life can't stumble can't fall can't make a mistake can't sin you got to walk uprightly every step all the time who's going to stand in the presence of God those that work righteousness those that keep the law of God to the letter of the law Somebody's thinking, how am I going to stand in the presence of God? I've never been able to do that. No, the truth is you've never been able to keep one of God's laws one time. So what's the Lord telling us? Look at the next one. Look at the next one. He who speaketh the truth in his heart. All the time. So that's not just what comes out of your lips. That's the thoughts and imaginations of your heart have to be truthful before God all the time, continuously, unbroken, perfect. <laughs> What's our hope? There's only one man that ever met that qualification. Who can stand in the presence of God? He who has a clean hand and a pure heart, who's never lifted up his heart to vanity, nor spoken deceitfully. Never, never. He's perfect. Perfect. You see, the religious world just says, you know, you just be a good person, do your best. You can, you can, you can satisfy what God requires. No, you can't. Just what God says. You gotta be perfect. 
How am I going to be perfect? Well, if I'm found in him, <laughs> not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that righteousness, which is by the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ, I can have acceptance before God in the beloved, in the beloved. The Lord Jesus Christ, every step continuously, he walked uprightly. Everything he did was righteousness and every thought, every thought of his heart was truth. You and I have never been able to have a holy thought. That's all he had was holy thoughts. All he had. So when we consider comparing ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, which is God's standard, he's the, he's the plumb line. He's the standard by which everything is measured by God. Then the only conclusion we can come to is that every time we speak, we're lying. <laughs> you know, we're, we're covering our tracks. We're trying to present ourselves as best we can. We're hiding things that we don't really want to say, things we think and intense of a heart that we, we don't want anybody to know about. And we ought to. We ought to. But the point is, it makes every one of us liars before God. Now, we ought to be honest people. We ought to speak the truth. We ought to, be, we ought to be faithful and reliable in terms of our relationships with men. I'm talking about your relationship with God. And God says all men are liars. God alone tells the truth. And yet, here he says, the way they'll know they're saved, the way they'll know that I'm their savior is because they are children that will not lie. Will not lie. Turn to me to 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is where this passage meets the Mark 4 passage from the previous hour. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. <laughs> you know, it, I love God's word. It, God, God's never ambiguous. <laughs> he, he never, you know, he, that Mark 4 passage, I, the light, the, nothing's going to be hid. It's, I'm going to just speak the truth, and it's going to be clear and simple, and the truth always is. And so the Spirit of God speaketh expressly. He's not, he's not speaking in riddles. He's not speaking uh, in veiled language. He's speaking expressly. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Now what did we see in John chapter, 1 John chapter 4? Try the spirits, whether they be of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. So now the Lord's saying there's going to be seducing spirits. They're going to seduce you. How do you seduce a person? By lying to them. And uh, doctrines of devils. Now, every time the word doctrine, and doctrine is a precious word. It means teaching. It's the teaching of God. But every time it's used with the, word, with the letter S at the end of it. As a, as a plural, it's always referring to something bad. God never says the doctrines of God or the doctrines of grace. God has one doctrine, one doctrine. And every time the word doctrines is used in the scriptures, it's speaking of something evil. And so he says, he says, "Don't they, they, they will give heed to, to liars, seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forgetting, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meat. So there's lots of touch not, taste not, handle nots in religion, isn't there? Lots of rules and regulations. God's calling them the doctrines of devils. 
which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Let me give you a good rule of thumb. In terms of trying to discern right from wrong, if you, from your heart, can thank God for it, enjoy it. If you can, from your heart, express gratitude and thanksgiving to God for it, enjoy it. If your heart smites you and you, you've got to hide from God about it, stay away from it. That's, that's, that's easy enough, isn't it? <laughs> um, that's what the Lord is saying here. But here, here's the seducing spirits and doctrines of men. Colossians chapter 2 verse 21. The Lord says that they will have doctrines of men and commandments of men. Which are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Touch not, taste not, handle not. We have one doctrine. It is the doctrine of God's free and sovereign grace in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our doctrine. He's our doctrine. So when the Lord says they will be children that will not lie, they're not going to be seduced by a works gospel. They're not going to be seduced by a free will gospel. They're not going to be drawn away by the doctrines of devils or the doctrines of men. They're going to have the hope of their salvation completely bound up and settled in the finished work and glorious person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will be their doctrine. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 15, it says, Those that will be left out of heaven, the sorcerers and the whoremongers and the murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. God says if you love a lie and you, tell, you make a lie, you're not going to be accepted into heaven. When does the child of God speak the truth? When they say amen to what God says. God said it, that settles it. You've seen the bumper sticker, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. No. Whether you believe it or not, God said it, that settles it. That settles it. So what has God said? What has God said? Well, he said a lot, hadn't he? <laughs> he said a lot. And in the volume of the book, it is written of me. This book is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not a book of doctrines it's not a book of rules and regulations. It's not a, a rule book for Christian li It is a book about the Lord Jesus Christ. It reveals him and his glory and gives the children of God one in whom they put all their hope and trust so that they are children that will not lie. And we believe all of God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the, that the child of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And it was not given by private interpretation, but holy men of God wrote as they were moved by the Spirit of God. We don't have creeds. 
We don't have confessions. We don't have traditions. We don't have any of that. In, 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 God's children will not lie. <laughs> They're not going to lie against the word of God. They're not going to rely upon the words of men over the word of God. And every, every religious organization has, a, has some sort of a creed, some sort of a confession, some sort of a church tradition that they rely upon. And in the end, it always overrules God's word. In other words, if church tradition says this, God's word says that, well, we're just going to go with what our fathers went with. God's children won't do that. They're not going to lie about the authority of the word of God. They won't do it. They believe, they believe every word of it. Understand it? All? No. No. But you won't hear a child of God say, well, yeah, I know what the Bible says, but. No, it's the goats that are budding against the word of God. Now, God's children bow to his word. They believe it all. I hear people say, well, how much of God's word do you have to believe to be a believer? Every word of it. Every word of it. That's what a believer does. A believer believes everything God says. I believe a whole lot more than I do, but I believe it. God's children will not lie. God's children will not lie about themselves. Michael, what you said was the truth growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to the realization more and more of my dependence upon him. I have no righteousness. I have no ability. You listen to, you listen to those who are not God's children and they're going to tell you about something good they're doing, aren't they? <laughs> I was telling folks Wednesday night, I was trying to do business with somebody last week and um, and we got into a discussion and had a chance to talk about scripture he knew just enough of the bible to be dangerous and uh, you know he prided himself in being very religious and, and so we had a good conversation and I was hopeful he said he would want to come to church and you know so we'll see but uh, but the end of the conversation I'm getting and, you know and everything I said about grace and about salvation about Christ he agreed with he agreed with. And I went to get in my car, and he wanted to convince me to do business with him, so he was quick to tell me. He said, well, you know, he said, I just need to let you know that 11%, not 10%, but 11% of everything that I make in my business, I give to charities. <laughs> if you were here last Sunday, that's plastic mangoes. That's all that is. And I thought, you know, but that's so typical, isn't it? I mean, men, everybody wants the right hand to know what the left hand's doing. Everybody wants to boast in what they're doing for God and what they're accomplishing. God's children don't lie about themselves. They, they don't lie about themselves to God. They don't believe that their salvation has anything to do with what they do. They don't believe that they had the ability to make a decision. You hear, you hear uh, people who are not the children of God, who claim to be the children of God, talking about a decision that they made. Well, I, you know, I accepted Jesus. I, I invited Jesus to come into my heart. You won't ever listen to you. You won't ever hear a child of God talk like that. Why? Because God's children don't lie. That person's lying. God's children know that they were born dead in their trespasses and sins and that if God had not opened the eyes of their understanding, had God not opened their ears, had God not taken out the heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh, they would never have believed. Coming to the Lord Jesus Christ is not a decision. It's not a choice. I'll tell you what I want you to do. 
Take your bulletin, if you will, please, and uh, open it up. There's an article there. The most believed lie. The most believed lie. There's a lot of soul-damning lies being told in the world that men believe. But the most unanimously believed lie, which God's children don't believe, this is what it means, how do I know that Christ has saved me? Because I'm not a liar. Oh, I am in the sense that we've already talked about. But I'm not a liar when it comes to, to, to speaking the truth about myself. I do not believe myself to have a free will. <laughs> now, if by free will a person thinks that they can, because they have the, uh, the, the right to choose between two different options, that therefore their will is free, uh, that's not... Let me... If by free will, this is the third paragraph, man believes that he is free when given two or more options to choose the one he wants, that is without dispute. As a matter of fact, that is always the case. We could even go so far as to say that it is important to select an option, that it is impossible, I'm sorry, to select an option that is not your preference. When given an opportunity to select from one are two or more possibilities, we always choose the one for which we have the greatest desire, always. Man's will is not free. It is subject to his natural inclination. And therein lies the problem. If you have a choice between Christ and anything else, you will always choose something else. The only way you're going to come to Christ is if God takes away all your options. When the Lord fed the 5,000 and, uh, and they all left, after he said to them, the only reason you're following me is so that you can have your bellies full, and that's nothing's changed. People, people want to follow Jesus and follow after God so that they can have their needs met in this world. And the Lord said to the disciples, won't you leave me also? Aren't you going to go with them? What did, what did Peter say? Lord, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? You alone have the words of eternal life. We know and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You have shut us up to yourself. We don't have an option. We're not believing on you because we decided to believe on you. Our will was in bondage to our natural desires. And our natural desire was against you. You're the one that made us willing in the day of your power. You're the one that caused us to believe. God's children will not lie about their will, about their abilities, about their righteousness, about their good works. They're not going to lie. They're not going to do it. And they're not going to pretend to be getting better. <laughs> they're not going to lie about themselves. So he was their savior. <laughs> So he was their savior. You hear somebody talking about making a decision and exercising their will and, and letting Jesus save them. They talk like that because they're not the children of God. They're liars. My children will not lie. And they won't lie about God. You hear somebody talk about how God loves everybody. They're lying. Jacob I've loved. Esau I've hated. I love righteousness. I hate iniquity. I'm angry with the wicked every day. <laughs> God's not capable of loving anything outside of perfect righteousness. <laughs> His eyes are too pure to look upon iniquity. If somebody's talking about God loving everybody. They are not the children of God. They're liars. God's people don't talk like that. You hear somebody talking about God wants everybody to be saved. He's doing his best. He's trying to get it done. 
but his hands are tied. You know, he, he's, he's subject to man's will. They are liars. God's children do not lie. They don't talk like that. They don't believe that. You hear people say, well, you know, Jesus died for everybody. Lie. That's a lie. He didn't die for everybody. He came to satisfy the demands of God's justice and God's righteousness on behalf of those whom God chose in the covenant of grace before time ever began according to his own will and purpose. That's the truth. That's what God says. God's children will not lie. You hear somebody say, well, you know, he... He, he, he made an offer of salvation. Won't you accept it? That's a lie. He didn't make that offer of salvation to us. He made it to the Father. And the Father accepted it. And was pleased with it. And was satisfied. And God the Father saw the travail of his soul. And was satisfied. And everyone that the Lord Jesus Christ died for. Was justified. Before the sight of God. <laughs> and anything else is a lie. And God says, My children, my children, they will not lie. They're not going to lie about themselves. They're not going to lie about God. They're not going to lie about the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not going to lie about God's Word. They're not going to twist the scriptures to make it fit their doctrines. They believe the doctrine of God's free grace in the accomplished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've, I've put the candle on the candlestick and it's filled the room with its light and they've seen the light. They will not lie. They're not going to go back. So he was their savior. What about you? Are you a liar? In a sense, yeah, we all are. We've, we've talked about that. But when it comes to who I am, who God is, what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished, and how it is that God's pleased to save sinners, my children will not lie. So he was their savior. Our merciful heavenly father, we're thankful for your word and we're thankful for your spirit and ask you, Lord, to make us to be children that will not lie. For we ask it in Christ's name. Number, number 30. Let's stand together. Number 30.
Saved by God's almighty grace, Christ, obedience to the Father is imputed now to me. In God's sight I'm pure and holy, He declares me so to I shall endure. This is not a vain presumption. I just take him at his word. Christ has sworn they shall not perish who be.